What's up YouTube, it's your boy Michael and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Stripe payments on your Next.js app and I also have a surprise at the end so make sure you stick around. So in this video this is the steps we're going to follow. We're going to create a fresh Next.js app, we're going to set up our Stripe product, we're going to set up a Stripe payment link, we're then going to set up the Stripe webhook API on Next.js and so every time a payment is made we can capture that or a cancellation or any sort of event happens. I'm going to show you all the different type of event types and I'm going to show you what you can do with that information. So I'm going to show you how it is that you can set up your Stripe payments, webhooks and all that stuff. And then whether you want to build a credit system, whether you, whatever it is that you want to build, I'll, I'll give you the bare bones code so you can build on top of that. So if you're excited, sit back, relax, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go on our terminal and we're going to go to desktop and then we're going to create a fresh Next.js app. We're going to say yes to TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind, no source directory, app router. Yes, yes. All right, our Next.js app is set up. So let's go open it right now. Okay, our, here is our VS Code. So we have a clean install of our Next.js app. Let's just hit a yarn real quick. Oh, I'll make sure someone told me to zoom in for the font. So I'll make sure I do that since today's video is more of a tutorial style video. So zoomed in for you guys. Hopefully you guys can see that. And let's yarn dev this. Let's open our localhost 3000. All right, perfect. So our localhost works. Okay, so step one is done. Now let's set up our Stripe product. So you're going to go to your Stripe account. I'm now going to show you how to set up a Stripe account because um, I'll have to put in a lot of legal information, but you can set up a Stripe account. Just go to the Stripe website. This is a dummy uh, dashboard I use to Stripe account that I use to test stuff. So this is what you're going to do. First, we have to create our product. So what I want you to do is you can go on search and, and type in product catalog and then select create a product so that's what i'm going to do you're going to be met with this section right here so let's call this youtube tutorial uh, product right and you can add a description image taxes all that type of stuff is there that's not what you're here for i don't give legal advice i'm just here to show you how to set it up let's set up a one-time payment um do i have any additional options one-time payment and then we're going to add the price here so I'll make it a dollar just so we can actually test this live um, and not just the um, the test environment so we're gonna save this product so I have my YouTube tutorial product I'm charging a crazy one dollar right so what I'm going to do after that is you see this right here where it says create payment link you're gonna click that this will generate your payment link your payment page I'm going to create create link. You can tweak it if you want, uh, but we just want to keep it simple. So this is our payment link. So if I go to this link right now, I will be brought to this page where I can pay for my YouTube tutorial product, which costs a crazy $1. So our payment link is set up. Our Stripe product is set up. Our payment link is set up. We're almost there. So next, we have to set up our Stripe webhook API. So we're going to go back to Stripe. I want you to go to search and then I want you to search web hooks. So you're going to search web hooks, click right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to add an endpoint. So when you click on add an endpoint, you'll be brought up here to listen to Stripe events. Essentially what this happens is you're going to have an API on your Next.js app. And every time a user makes a payment, it's going to fire your Next.js API. And with that, you can take the data, store it in your database, do whatever you want with it. I can draw a simple uh, diagram just to show this. So here's user, right? And the user goes on your website and finds the Stripe payment link and he, and he or she pays, right? When the user pays, Stripe, I'll just put Stripe as a box here, Stripe will catch the payment and then will send a request to your Next.js app. This is your Next.js app. Right. So we have to build a webhook API that every time someone pays, Stripe fires that information to our API and then we can then store that information in our database. So did I say database, I mean database. Sorry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test in a local environment first. And then you can see here they give us a sample endpoint. This is for Node.js, but I'm going to convert this so it works in Next.js. So let's head over to VS Code. All right, so we're in VS Code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file, do API slash webhook. 
slash route.ts. So this is going to create two folders, API webhook and the file route.ts. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to import Stripe from Stripe. I haven't installed Stripe yet, so let's go yarn add Stripe. Let that install. Next, we're going to import uh, next response and next request since this is a Next.js API request. And now let's write out the API. So we're going to do export async function post. Then we're going to come in there. And then we're going to have request be next request and then response be of the type next response. Now we have to create a new Stripe instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to do const Stripe equals new Stripe. And here we have to pass in the API. Key. We've set up our Stripe product and our Stripe webhook, but we haven't got our API key. So let's do that right now. So to get your Stripe API key, what you're going to do is you're going to go to search again and you're going to search API keys. Now this page will be blurred because I have some API keys that I'm actually using. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a secret key. So I'll call this YouTube tutorial. Now for you sneaky fellers there, I'm going to be deleting this. So don't try nothing. Okay. So I'm going to copy this code. So I'm going to copy this uh, secret key, go to my Next.js app. Let's create a dot env dot local. Let's call it Stripe secret key. And we just paste it in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do process dot m dot stripe secret key. Now it's saying the argument of type string are undefined. It has to be a type string. So what we're going to do is we're going to add exclamation at the end telling it, hey, listen, you could trust me. It's going to be a string. So we have our stripe instance ready. Let's finish the webhook. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do const payload. Const payload equals await request dot text. And then we're going to parse through that payload. Gotcha. Oh, I'll call this response. Now this comes from Stripe. So it's going to be const sig, which is going to refer to uh, the Stripe signature. We're going to do request dot headers dot get Stripe signature. And the reason why this is necessary is so that if just any uh, Bozo wants to hit your API unless the Stripe signature is there. It will not go through. So it's just a great thing. So we're going to do const date time new date. We're going to be res dot. We're going to do res we're going to do response dot created times a thousand to local date string. And then we're going to do the same thing for the time. So we're going to call this time string. So far in the setup, we're good. Now we're going to do try catch and then we're going to write this code. So let event equals stripe. We're going to call on the stripe we initiated. Webhooks dot construct event, right? And then it takes in three things our payload, our payload, our signature. And it's going to take an environment variable, but this one's going to be different. So this one is going to be your webhook secret key. So I'm just going to name the Stripe webhook secret. And just so signature can trust me, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that as well. So let's go back to our Stripe dashboard and get our webhook secret. key. So we're back on the webhook section. Again, if you don't know how to get there, you just click on search and then search webhooks. You're going to click add endpoint. You're going to go test in local environment and then you see this webhook right here this webhook secret it says here this stripe cli webhook secrets for testing your endpoint locally so we're going to first test locally and then we'll do a live test so i'm going to copy this copy this right here let's go back to our vs code and we're going to add this in our dot env perfect we're going to save this perfect so now what we're going to do is just, i'm just going to copy paste this response and then here what i want to do is i want us to console log um, event and then do event dot type because I want to show you guys something and then we're just going to return uh, status success and then return the event dot type so so far this is looking good I'll just call this event 
All right, so far this is looking good. Now let's test if this webhook actually works. So back on our dashboard where it says test and local environment, we're going to follow the following commands. So we're gonna do Stripe login. So let's go on our VS code, open a separate terminal, and then let's do Stripe login. It's gonna say, please enter to open the browser or visit here. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna open the browser and I'm going to allow access. Access is granted, I can now close this. So my Stripe is now authenticated. So let's go back to the browser. Now it says forward events to your webhook. So we're gonna do Stripe listen forward to then our webhook URL. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna open a separate uh, terminal. Let me just minimize this here. I moved it myself up top. So let's enter the following command. It says Stripe listen forward to localhost Notice the URL, it says 4242, that's the port. Our port is 3000, and our path to the webhook is slash API slash webhook. So we make, we're gonna make that change, and then we're gonna hit enter. So okay, so now it's ready to listen to all webhook events. This is great. So now all we have to do is trigger an event. So there's multiple different events we can tr trigger. I'm just going to trigger uh, this event itself, so we'll copy this hit, uh, go to our VS code, and let's do it here. So let's trigger the payment intent succeeded event. When we hit enter, there you have it. So notice here we got 200 on our post request, so our webhook works well. And then if you notice in our terminal, we got a couple console logs. We got a payment intent dot succeeded, payment intent dot created, charge dot succeeded event types fire off. So our webhook works and our API is functioning. So this is fantastic. So going back to our to-do list, we have now our we now have our Stripe webhook API set up. So we'll just delete this right here. And now I want us to review all the different event types. So we're gonna go back to our Stripe dashboard and we're gonna click add web point, uh, add an endpoint. So what you do is when you push your app to production, you can put your production URL here and then it will fire the, the, uh, the request to that endpoint. But there's one thing I wanna show you guys where it says here, select events to listen to. You can see that there are tons of events here, right? So if you're doing like a, like a simple, like one-time payment thing where someone pays for uh, access or, or like credits or whatever, the there are events like charge.succeeded. This occurs when the successful charges happen. There's also different payment methods where charge refund updated, reinstated, checkout session sync, customer subscription pause. If you're doing a subscription service, you could do customer subscription resumed. There are tons of events and it would take me hours to just go through and show you every single event. But the events I use for the most part for simple payments are the payment intents. So you can go through these like payment created, uh, canceled, failed processing, succeeded. The main one really is charge.succeeded, right? And this uh, event ha fires right here when a successful charge happens. So how would you continue on knowing with these different type of events? So first thing is you have to identify what type of product you're building, what the payment system will look like, identify the necessary events that you would need to store in your database. So let's imagine that you've done that. You've identified the necessary information that you need to store in your database. So you go back to your VS code once you've done that, and this is where all the magic happens, right? This is where all the sauce happens. I don't know why I felt like typing that. But once you have the event type, this is where you would store all the information. So an example I can show you from a previous project is this. So I just copy pasted some code from uh, another project, but this is essentially the setup I have, right? So I'm tracking for three events, charge succeeded, payment intent succeeded, payment intent created. I set that up on my dashboard here. So literally all you have to do is select, select, you add these events, you add in your URL, the description, and then you add endpoint. It's as simple as that. So going back to our VS code, I have these events selected. So every time these events happen, this uh, webhook API will be fired. And then what I do is I have a function um, that has a connection to my database that's going to store all this necessary information. And where I got this information is not from 
uh, this response. You actually don't need this response right here. It is from response here. So I'll change this to res, 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 just so we can see it clearly. So from this response object here, from this payload right here, there's a lot of information you could get. You get the billing details, the email, the amount, payment information, payment type, um, the date, time, and time string, calculate the time for you, like what date and what time it happened, the email to which the receipt is sent, the receipt URL, um, and then there's like payment method information. They use a Visa, MasterCard, all this type of stuff, uh, billing details, um, and the currency, of course. So this is just a, 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 a few of the, of the data points, the, the information you get from this response, right? You get a lot of information there. So it's up to you uh, to go through what it is that you get and what information is necessary for you to store. Because once you've stored this on the database, that's when every time a user logs in, you can have some sort of check that checks if they're a VIP tier, if they are a free tier, whatever tier it is. But this is how simple it is to set up a Stripe webhook. Once you have your webhook set up, all you need is your secret key, your uh, and then your webhook secret, and then all you have to do is just fire off events. Now, I want to deploy this to production and actually do a legitimate payment and see if we capture it. So let's do that. So I'm on my GitHub right now. I'm just going to create a new repo. We'll call it YouTube Stripe uh, Payments right and then we'll leave this public if anyone wants the code so we'll create the repository and then I will get remote add this let's get remote add okay and then I'll, what I'll just do is get add get commit we'll just say stripe payments get push all right so oh let me do sorry get push set upstream and now it's been pushed if we refresh this we have our project set. So now let's go to Vercel and let's just quickly deploy this. At Vercel, I'm going to click Add New, click on Project. I'm going to select the Git repository. We're going to import this now. Environment variable. So I had uh, I have the secret key, but the webhook secret is not is a test environment one. It's not a production one. So, um, this the secret key for the webhook is found here. It's not in the code that you find there. So um, just want to make this clear. So you find the secret key here. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to copy the secret key, the webhook secret key in here and then hit save. Yay. So our project is deployed. Let's continue the dashboard. Let's get the URL. So I'm going to click on this URL and now our API, our webhook API slash API slash webhook. So let me take this here. Let's go to dashboard, add this right here and the events we want. Let's just do charge succeeded. Um, we're on the latest version. So we're going to click on add endpoint. Okay, so the endpoint end has been added. So now to make sure this works, the only thing left to do is to make a payment. So I'm going to make a payment. Um, I'm going to cover the screen, obviously, and then well, let's see if it captures it. I just made another payment. This business is truly booming. So let's go to our Stripe dashboard now. Let's refresh. Let's go to succeeded and you see the status is success. The event charge succeeded has been recorded. And if we go to our logs, we just refresh query right here. As you can see, you can see my console log. Uh, the event got console logged and then you see some information here that I have to blur out because my payment information is here. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you set up your Stripe payments on your Next.js app. We have covered everything. I hope this tutorial made sense. I'm slowly getting into creating longer form videos. So let me know if you enjoyed this, if you have any feedback and make sure you do subscribe. And as a surprise, I have launched our community discord. So make sure to click the link in the description, join this community's discord. And I hope to create some fun projects, some awesome content and help you guys be better developers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace.